The obfuscation of modern slavery, or for those who prefer to get swifty, slavery with extra steps, is a concept many might not be aware of. Slavery in the minds of most people looks a lot like plantations, whips, and tattered clothing. Your average political moderate would like to think that we are not dependent on such gruesome labor anymore, especially after the work of people like Lincoln and Martin Luther King Jr. It is certainly comforting to make the assumption that we no longer require slave labor in a modern society, and that we have weaned from it for the betterment of the workers. Sadly, what has really happened is not the phasing out of slavery, but more so the obfuscation of it so capitalists can still be dependent on it. Before I jump right into what modern slavery is, first I need to explain the Marxist way of looking at labor. This will allow us to create a basic understanding of labor's involvement in a market, and how a capitalist treats labor in relation to their business. Labor, for most businesses, is the major cost of operation. While innovation can create additional profits for a capitalist through efficiency, it is vastly easier in comparison to reduce the cost of labor. Regardless of morals, it is obviously favorable for capitalists to find the cheapest labor they can in a market. And sadly, this labor is basically slavery. When it was first prevalent in America, many industries became highly dependent on slavery for the insanely low labor costs. If the continuation of this dependency meant obfuscating it enough so that the public or legislators don't regulate this sort of thing away, then that's just seen as the cost of business. Considering that slavery is vastly cheaper than well-paid labor, the cost of obfuscation is nothing when you consider how expensive actually paying your workers is. With that said, here are two categories of borderline slavery that capitalism has become dependent on. These types of modern slavery have adapted to the modern environment, and have become obfuscated enough that industries can become dependent on it. Starting with what can be the easiest to compare to slavery, we begin at prison labor. In my video What Are Proxy Politics, I mentioned that the war on drugs was a proxy for unfairly arresting demographics of people that were less likely to vote for Republicans, usually blacks, Hispanics, and hippies, by associating them with drug use and then arresting them accordingly. This is something that John Elrickman, who worked under the Nixon administration, has admitted to in a quote I referenced in that video. I bring this up just to remind you that prison labor is made up of many people of color, and that such an outcome is entirely purposeful due to these policies. It's led to African Americans being incarcerated at more than five times the rate of whites, and despite using and selling drugs at the same rate as whites, still being arrested for drug-related offenses up to 15 times more than whites. While drug offenders don't make up a majority of those incarcerated, they still make up almost half of those newly incarcerated. Stepping away from race for a moment, what about the labor? We understand that a lot of this labor comes from people of color indiscriminately arrested due to Nixon-era policies, but what conditions are these people in? Firstly, prisoners are paid between 15 cents to about $1.50 per hour. Most of this work is in prison jobs, such as grounds maintenance, custodial jobs, laundry, etc. The problem is that some private industries have been using this labor due to its low cost, and it's been used for campaign phone calls, video production, customer service calls, and even farm work. Just as companies have gotten used to paying people wages that don't keep up with inflation nor productivity, they've also gotten used to taking advantage of prison labor, when possible, to push prices even lower. It's all a race to the bottom. One argument I've heard in defense of these poor prison labor wages is that they make up for retribution costs since prisoners aren't technically living for free. This is bullshit when you realize that there are many middleman companies that put exorbitant fees on basic things like phone calls and cash transactions to prisoners some of which go to a prisoner welfare fund, which hasn't been used to cover these costs, but instead has been squandered on things like tasers. There are plenty of better ways to make up for the operation costs of prison. Borderline slave labor should never be one of the acceptable options when we have charities and taxpayer dollars at our disposal. While I can go on for much longer about prison labor and how unfair it is to take advantage of the public's general disdain towards criminals as a way to be nonchalantly brutal to them, there's another type of modern slave labor that many people can relate to. Wage slavery is a Marxist term that critiques the concept of literally working for a living. If you don't have a job, you won't be able to afford the costs of living, which doesn't give you much freedom from work. This problem gets much more complex when you realize that what we are getting paid for our work isn't keeping up with what we're doing it for. It's not keeping up with skyrocketing living costs, nor inflation, nor the worth we actually produce. On top of that, there are now many debt traps within the status quo of life. To get a job, or a well-paying one at least, you have to go to college, already putting you in debt before you have a job. Add that onto the increasing cost of rent, exorbitant medical fees if you live in the United States, God forbid you have a kid here, and you're with the rest of Americans, in the red, where most companies want you. This debt gives you reason to work. Not a good one, but it's the chain that keeps you connected to your job if starving to death it wasn't enough. While stagnant wages are one thing that keep you oppressed under wage slavery, it's also the conditions many workers are put in that make this all more like slave labor. 
such as firing employees and making the current ones do their work for the same pay to lower labor costs. As I said previously, there are some industries like customer service that are made up of prisoners to get cheap labor, but some companies do something similar without having to exploit prisoners, just regular people who need a wage to live. The video game industry, anime industry, clothing industry, and tech industry, just to name a few, regularly break laws pertaining to things like minimum pay and overtime pay, and tend to put their workers on crunch time just to get more worth out of them, usually taking advantage of their passion for their work, something that's also done to teachers and pilots since it keeps them from quitting. As for the clothing and tech industries, they are instead dependent on slave labor from other countries where they can do something similar, and all they have to do to obfuscate it is say they didn't know. So, not only is a majority of the entertainment Americans consume a derivative of technically slave labor, but in many places you might not even be aware of. How do you know that the building you're in right now wasn't made by victims of human trafficking in the construction industry? You don't. It's not that a lot of industries aren't dependent on slave labor, because they certainly are, but it's more about making sure you don't know that. If we are alienated from the struggles of the workers that build the world we experience every day, we are one step further away from helping them become free from their chains. If you read any of the articles I linked, and I suggest you do if you're interested in further details, you'll notice the word modern slavery is used quite frequently. That's what I'm criticizing. This is the kind of new slavery that I'm claiming is being obfuscated for the benefit of the profiteers. It seems, though, that such a message doesn't seem to get across to some audiences, though. The thumbnail of this video pertains to a meme from an episode of Rick and Morty, whose audience, from what I can tell, doesn't seem too fond of communism. Which is funny, because their episode on Pluto was a giant metaphor for how the rich don't care about climate change due to profits, and even the episode where the slavery with extra steps meme comes from actually contains a Marxist analysis on what really constitutes slavery, hinting that if the work of many is done to benefit one person, then regardless of what freedom they have beyond that, they are still slaves. I can see why this message goes over people's heads, though. Sometimes it's more comfortable for some of us to be sedated because we're cowards. Late stage capitalism is such a pain. Especially when you're working as someone's battery, or maybe even one for their car. Anti capitalism has been in the media for a long time, sometimes even using the same metaphors from movies that are decades old. They're reminding you that slavery isn't dead, just different. <laughs> 